Hello you lot, Miller Corner here and welcome to another virtual car meet. Yep, yeah, it's that time where for a brief moment I shut up, thank God, and I hand the floor over to you lovely lot to show off all your mad cars, what you love about them, what you've done to them, and why we're all into cars in our different ways. This week's I did announce at a little bit short notice, so I do apologise if you did want to get your car in, but don't worry, there will be plenty more of these in the future. But for now, we've got four participants with a range of awesome cars and we're going to start with Mr. Joseph Lloyd of Lloyd's Vehicle Consulting. Now if you've been watching these virtual car meets since the beginning you'll know that Joseph has been on here before with his Vauxhall Astra twin top and then his Rover 216 SLI which I used to run as part of the Classics World Fleet for my job. Now once he got rid of that R8 he then went and bought another Rover and a properly rare and interesting one at that, his 45 V6. Good afternoon, my name is Joseph Floyd and I've had a couple of cars already on Mr Miller's virtual car meets. This is my 2003 Rover 45 V6 2 litre uh, V6 Connoisseur, I think I've monitored V6 twice, but that's the main point of having one of these is actually the V6 engine. They only made 700 of these, there are about 90 left tax on a road as you can see it is a V6. This is not the car from um, the Hubnut Channel, Ian Seabrook, did used to have a 45 V6. That's currently owned by um, a friend of mine who lives in the northeast. We've got a full leather interior in this car. This is a, a slightly later one than the one that he had, so we've got a different steering wheel from which they removed the controls for the stereo because of Project Drive, which was uh, an MG Rover cost-cutting initiative. Cruise control, that was unique to the V6 models. The uh, wood trim, although it is fake wood and some nice white dials which say Rover on them, just in case you forget what you're driving. Non-standard stereo because the original Becker sat-nav unit, which I do have, actually um, had no code when I bought the car, so I had to replace that. But there alone, they're sort of things that would have been in the Maserati or Ferrari, so they're worth a fair bit of money. Because it's a later car, we also have the um, Cosmos alloy wheels on this one. They also um, share the chassis from, from just about every Honda Civic from about 91 to 2000. So they're all very similar, all interrelated. Swap the wheels, swap the brakes, and all kinds of things on this. This one has um, all round uh, disc brakes, although on the ZS 180, and I've tested the ZS 180 on my channel quite recently, they're much bigger than this. On a ZS 180 and on a 45 V6, you get the KV6 um, Rover developed engine. This is a two litre version of it, uh, developing 140 eight horsepower. The uh, ZS 180 got a 2.5 litre version of this engine developing 177 horsepower before modifications. So there we are, my second Rover for the uh, Miller Corner um, virtual car meet. Uh, thank you ever so much indeed for watching. I do have various reviews of this car and others on my channel and the ZS 180 and my, uh, my old uh, Rover 216 that Mr Miller used to own as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. A charming vehicle, slightly quirky, but very interesting. Do love a Rover. Next up, we've got Mark, who's got something a lot more modern. In fact, the first ever brand new car on one of these virtual car meets. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know I'm not an enormous fan of a lot of new cars, but this one I was deeply fascinated by. So much so, in fact, I'm actually considering choosing it as my next company car. I'm that interested in this thing. Here's Mark with his Fiat Panda Cross which would be interesting enough, but it's a Fiat Panda Cross hybrid. Hi all, I thought I'd uh, show you my new car. This is uh, it's a Fiat Panda a City Cross that I've had owned since September. My first ever Panda. Although I've been driving Italian cars for the last eight years or so. I've had uh, a Mark 1 Punto JTD uh, two newer style Puntos which they discontinued in 2018 and I, I was thinking the Tipo I didn't quite like the look of it and perhaps I didn't like the size of it I always thought the Panda Panda was a car I've overlooked really but really really nice looking car and a very fun looking car and yeah I'm really glad I brought it it's the mild hybrid and it's in a, a lovely dew green colour it's really economical um I've crept up to over 54 miles per gallon. I think the projected MPG was about 49.8 so I'm, I'm quite above what they, they tell you it would be. It's quite pleasing. But it does sound pretty good. It's got a, a one litre three three cylinder engine. It sounds quite good under load so perhaps once I'm here you know once I've owned it a bit more and it's got a good MPG fit figure I'll uh, give it more of a thorough working out. Really fun to drive. The kids like it. I've got two children that's another thing that uh, you know put me off at first thinking there might not be enough room but there is enough room for them. Keep up the good work with the channel. 
Thanks, Mark. Cracking little car there. And it must be said, yeah, I still want one. Next up is Josh with another relatively modern small car, but another one that's really interesting. If you don't live in the UK or China, you might not even know this exists, but I love them and I think it's an interesting little nugget. Say hello to Josh and his MG3. Hello Joe and hello everybody watching. My name's Josh and this is my 2014 MG3. Let's get taking a look around it, shall we? Okay guys, so this is my 2014 MG3 style. It's powered by a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated engine that from standard pushes out somewhere in the region of 105 brake horsepower and 101 pounds feet of torque. I have started modifying it and so far I've added an ITG performance panel air filter, some Magnacore ignition leads and a custom made catalyst back stainless steel exhaust system. This exhaust system sounds absolutely fantastic. In fact, it sounds a little bit like this. I'm planning to add more things to the MG, such as replacing the rest of the exhaust system with stainless steel, adding custom coil overs, and even doing an ECU remap. But as with any project car, the list goes on and on and on. Thankfully, it's a brilliant car as it is. I really enjoy driving it, and I love the fact that there aren't many early MG3s about, making my car somewhat of a rarity. Just before I leave you, I just want to tell you about my YouTube channel, Maverick Motors. This is where I document everything I do with the MG3, and just cars in general, like fixing up this tatty old Rover. So head over there if you want to see more of what I do. But without any further ado, back over to you, Joe. Properly quirky car that, and it's one of the few modern cars you can buy that still feels distinctly like a slightly older one. I'm a big fan of anything quirky and different, and for that reason alone, the MG3 has got a place on this channel. Finally, we come to Jules Van... Jules Van... Sorry bud, I'm not going to butcher the pronunciation of this. It's on screen there, but frankly, I wouldn't be able to say that properly. The reason I've left Jules until last is that his family are Italian car obsessives. And frankly, if I told you you could only own these cars for the rest of your life, well, no complaints from me. Hi Joe, and everyone else. This is my little 2001 Fiat Cento Sporting, which I've modified a bit with, as you can see, a little wild scorpion a racing strap because race car yellow fog lights gumpy air intake team hacker wind deflectors 14 inch bath wheels which i've painted black racing sport discs which are a bit rusty because i washed the car a very loud and nice ultra exhaust system which my neighbors doesn't like another abart sticker a spoiler from team hacko a little Santo Club Holland sticker for all the chinks and says in the Dutch. In the background you see my dad's Fiat Panda. My mom's 147 special edition which has the chrome wing wheels and the black line roof. This drives really well, well because it is an Alfa. And last but not least our classic car. It's a 1976 Alfa Romeo Alfetta 1.6 twin cam. Really fun car to drive. With the custom GTV dashboard. Modified is better. You have the 1.6 twin cam. Twin carburetors. Really fun car to drive. Get a lot of looks. Well, that was it then. And that is what you call the perfect family driveway. Thanks Jules and everyone else for sending your clips in. We've got a cracking selection of cars there. And let's be honest, I think any and all of them deserve a place on this channel for their various reasons. Once again, I know this video was quite short notice, so a lot of you didn't have time to get clips in, but that's absolutely fine. There will be plenty more Miller Corner virtual car meets in the future. Next week though, we're hopefully back on the Super Seicento. So I'll catch you then, and in the meantime, have a good one.